Well, hello again. Hope you guys had a good lunch. I hope you had lunch, in, uh, or however that works. Gosh, I am so excited to be with you guys. I really, really am. It breaks my heart that I can't see you and be with you. You know, um, part of the interaction for me is I'm very relational, meaning I feed off of, of um, everybody that's around me and uh, can really begin to understand the dynamics of conversations, and, um, which is going to segue right into our next session here on trying to learn how to manage all the different stressors of 2020. And I, I know we talked um, quite a bit about some of those stressors. Man, I wish I could hear your stories uh, because all of you are so unique in the things that you're experiencing. And I just wish I could, I, I wish I could do that. Maybe uh, uh, my email, my website, I would love to get to know you. If you either text or yeah, my, I'll give you my phone number too um, at the end, because maybe we can text, email. And that way, I, I just want to hear your stories and get to know you and be able to walk beside you. That would be really cool for me. So what we're going to spend these next minutes on is managing the stressors of 2020. I want to have fun with you. I want this to be engaging and yet learning. So visualize. I'm a visual teacher. I don't know if you know that 87% of people learn visually. 87%. The other 13% are real cognitive learners. And I teach, uh, I teach at college, at the college level. And, um, it's always important to identify the ones that are not visual learners and then just try to connect with them uh, where I can cognitively challenge them rather than visually impair them. And I hope I haven't impaired you, but um, I want you to visualize this. Over my next minutes with you, you are now a toolbox. Take the, open up your toolbox, top of your head, and I'm going to give you 10 tools to put in there and the beauty about these tools in this toolbox that you are going to put these in is that you can reach out there and grab them when you need them each tool has a different meaning for a different time for a different place for a different event for a different setting so the 10 tools that i'm going to give you they're not in any order they're not one better than the other some of these may not work for you, so all of them might work. Um, but it's gonna, I'm just going to fill up your, your toolbox, and then you can use them as you so will. So with that being said, we're going to go back into our wonderful slides. So um, we're going to spend the time in our afternoon session on managing the stressors of 2020. I love this. I, I, there are things that I have to do when I wake up. Don't start your day with the broken pieces of yesterday. Every day is fresh. Every day is a fresh start. Each day is a new beginning. Every morning that we wake up is the first day of our new life. And that is an attitude that I have to embrace every day that I look. And we'll talk a little bit more about some of the, the techniques there. So my question to you is, how are you surviving? And I wish I could ask that individually. And just listen. How are you surviving? What are you using? What are you doing? How are you doing it? I love this quote because I know for me that I survived because the fire inside of me burns brighter than the fire around me. And Family, I, I, I challenge you in our last session to 
grasp hold of those things that burn within you, whether it's your, uh, your faith, whether it's your spouse, whether it's your siblings, whether it's your family members, whatever that is, those are the things that burn in us that keep us, keep the fire burning within us, which is greater than all the things that are surrounding us. So here's 10 tools. Number one, I, I wrote the duration in here and I meant to write hurricanes. My gosh, Florida is always in. I have deployed to Florida probably at least 10 times in the last 30 years to different uh, hurricanes and different events. So uh, in Iowa, we have the duration. Some of you probably never even heard of that word. I've, I've been a disaster response for 30 years, and this is the first duration that I've responded to, actually lived in. So here it is. Take the time to talk about the stressors. Everything around you. Talk about it. Be authentic. Be real. Try to remain upbeat. But share with them how you feel. Own your own stress. And I know that in, in our city here, and I know in Florida, there are always a plethora of resources that are there. I am one of the federal entities when I deploy that is there as a re resource. But talk. Talk, 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 talk. It's one of the, the, the main things that we miss in our, uh, is the ability to communicate with each other. This next one is huge. Nothing is the same. I was in Florida the week they shut everything down. My wife and I went back there. In fact, I was going to go meet uh, some of the, the, the wonderful people from Health First um, Center for Family Caregivers. We flew down to Florida for a little bit of a vacation with a purposeful intent of meeting our folks that are running this conference. Tiffany's a very close friend of mine. I love you, Tiffany. Um, and I've gotten to know so many of them over the phones and, and uh, how you all have worked with me. It's been wonderful. But while I was there, that, that week, they shut things down. And I had to have that conversation with Tiffany and, and, and the others. You know, hey, Jim, maybe it's best that you and your wife don't come here. And so we didn't. In fact, we cut our vacation off. We were only there for two days. Everything shut down. It was horrible timing, but everything's horrible timing right now. Schools aren't the same. Uh, businesses aren't the same. Movie theaters. I know that in Florida, along with Iowa, COVID is spiking again. And with that, more beaches are probably going to shut down and Restaurants, if you're a church goer, man, that hasn't looked anything like it used to. Sometimes they're virtual and sometimes we just don't go to church at all anymore. So we got to discover new ways to thrive in our being and also in the being with our loved ones and our, and our, our shared ones. So new regular routines. I love this quote from Roy Bennett. He said, instead of worrying about what you can't control, shift your energy to what you can control. Head to heart, 18 inches, heart to head. Let this get in. Instead of worrying about what you can't control, shift your energy to what you can create. Be creative. We have to. My wife and I have had to. Um, in the midst of all the stuff that we're going through here, had to get creative. You know, I, I got to share something fun with you. Um, 
it's fun because here we are in the middle of this disaster. I came back got off the plane and I saw the devastation in Cedar Rapids. My neighborhood, devastated. Where I work, I work at a, a um, I'm the grief care specialist at a very large uh, cemetery and funeral. We lost 300 trees that were 100 years old. It, I drove in my neighborhood and I just cried. I bawled. Nothing is the same. I walked into my master bedroom that has buckets, garbage cans, ice chests that are catching water flowing in from the ceiling everywhere, along with six other rooms that are collecting water everywhere. And I looked at my wife. I said, come here, baby. And I played one of our songs on our little phone, and I just danced with her at the foot of our bed that there was no more carpet all the all the walls are gone the ceiling's gone all ripped out and i just danced with it i just danced you know sometimes that's all we can do is dance in the middle of the storm we dance in the rain as caregivers we are constantly under change that we have to adapt with our with our loved ones, with the, the pandemic, we are under constant change. And so we have to be creative in rethinking about ways to do things new, create new things, make them happen. So let's go to tool number three. Exercise. Oh, my, my, my. Boy, this is a tough one, isn't it? Um, studies have shown, and, and, and I don't have to really beat this drum very loudly, but studies have shown that exercise is the number one combat for stressors. In fact, um, it has been proven that exercise if done regularly, acts as a natural painkiller. So if you want to get off some of the pain meds, exercise. It's unbelievable. There are things that are released in the body. There's stress hormones, there's cortisol, endorphins. All these chemicals improve your mood. They improve your ability to sleep. And we all know without sleep, we can be become very anxious. If you can find a routine, an extra exercise routine, and implement that into your daily life, walking, dancing, golfing, hiking, whatever that might be, if you can implement that and Get on a normal routine. Your life will improve. I, I promise you. Every step shows it. All right. So I want to do something with you. All right. I want you to get in a comfortable position. Wherever that is. However that is. I'm going to show you the power of breath. You know, um, I've, I've had a few private practices in over my lifetime. Um, but have you guys ever heard, take a deep breath, just slow down, take a deep breath. There's an incredible thing that happens when we breathe. So get in a comfortable position, uh, sit down, relax. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and, and you know, you're probably looking at me going, yeah, close your eyes, coil. I'm going to close mine too. I'm going to lead you through a breathing exercise. I will guide you. We're going to take the biggest amount of deepest breath in. We're going to hold it and then release it. We're going to do that five times. All right. So here's our first number one. I want all of you to close your eyes and breathe in with me. The biggest, deepest breath. Breathe in. And hold it. Hold it. 
hold it, hold it, and release, push it all out, all of it, all of it, push it all out. We're going to breathe in again, and when you exhale, all of it goes. Breathe in. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. And exhale. Push it all out. Everything. All of it. All of it. Get it all out. Breathe in. Hold it. 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 And release. Two more. Breathe in with me. Biggest. Take it all in. Big time. Keep holding it. And release it. Push it all out. Breathe in. Hold it. This is your last one. Keep holding. And exhale. Now open your eyes. How many of you feel just a little lightheaded? It's an amazing thing what you just did. Oxygen feeds our blood. When you breathe in as big and deep as you can and you hold it, that blood goes to the very ends of every hair follicle. It goes to the tips of your fingers. Every capillary in your body is being nourished by this oxygen. So when we breathe in, we're feeding our body. Breathe in. So throughout your day, take three or four big deep breaths. I guarantee you will feel better. I don't recommend this while you're driving. I wouldn't do that. Just breathe in and breathe out the biggest amount of air that you can inhale and exhale all at the same time. Do that and you will feel better. I know I feel better, right? Just by doing that, it was huge. I love this quote by Eddie Hillison. Sometimes the most important thing in a whole day is the rest taken between two breaths. I'm going to read it again. Sometimes the most important thing in a whole day is the rest taken between two breaths. So let's go to number six. So we need to find humor in your day. Relive memories. Good humor is wonderful. It's, it is a tonic for your mind. It's a tonic for your body. It is the best antidote for anxiety and depression. Humor attracts friends. It lightens complex stress. And I tell you what, it is an incredible antidote. So I got to tell you about my buddy. I got a buddy that I graduated high school with. But not only graduated high school, we grew up on the same street. We went to elementary school. We went to junior high school. We went to high school. And we did a whole lot of things that maybe we shouldn't have done together. So he's in Iowa. Imagine him coming to Iowa. Nobody comes to Iowa. But there was a conference, and the conference got called because of the pandemic. And so what took place is that he gave me a shout. He said, hey, Jim, um, I can come and visit you. I said, dude, are you serious? Let's, let's do this. He came over to my house. We went into my basement. And uh, this is before it's all being restructured right now. We sat down. <clears throat> now, I'm, I'm, I'm in my mid-60s. So... 
I have a difficult time remembering names. Just seeing. I don't know if, if any of you else have that difficult time. So name recall is not a strength of mine. In fact, I forget my wife's name once why. I just have to call her honey. Babe. On the other side was my mid-60s friend who couldn't remember events. He remembered names. So think about what we did for more than two and a half hours. We sat there. We relived the events that I knew every detail. And he could plug in every person that was there. Between the two of us, we went back in time. And I'm telling you, I belly laughed. In fact, I could... I could stop and go to some of the things that we have and just go there because that laughing was tremendous. And that happened, what, four months ago prior to me deploying on other deployments? And I still, I could close my eyes and go there. So um, humor is incredible. Find something to laugh at. There's always humor in everything. And if we could just figure out what that is and make that happen. The next thing is what we're doing here today. And this is a top one. Spending virtual time with your friends, family. Man, this is a tough time. Um, I have to... I have to tell you, you know, I spent a lot of time in death care and, and that maybe that was those last transitions. And many times uh, I go into intensive care units with families and I, I walk beside them and, um, during the, the difficult time. And I'm there with them when um, they have to pull the uh, electricity off of, of a ventilator or the life support, and I just have to walk by him. But here's the crazy thing about this, is I can't go in these rooms, but yet they still want me there, so they've called me on a phone where I have FaceTimed in an intensive care unit, and I've done that three times. I actually just married, we were on a, on a, uh, a deployment to Texas, and one of, uh, one of our uh, first responders was getting married. And they asked me to do the, the ceremony over the phone. So we did a virtual wedding. He was with me. She was home. We exchanged rings. We exchanged vows. They gave a virtual kiss. I pronounced them man and wife. Um, this is my first year that I'm not seeing my grandkids. I have two grandkids in Las Vegas. And they, it's so sad not to be there, but with all my deployments, uh, no more vacation time, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Things have been tough. And so we FaceTime. And to be able to connect with my, my grandkids, through they, 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 uh, my birthday was just a, uh, a week ago. And, um, or last month. And, they sang happy birthday to me and they did they videotaped and sent me oh but these are tough times i know these formats these webinars the, I, uh, the different formats that we are using to share and, and be with her are difficult um a zoom account you can get a zoom account for free you know i teach at college we teach on zoom i have hybrid courses this semester hybrid meaning Half a class is face-to-face -face one day, while the other half is online watching the video. And then they alternate days. That's called hybrid learning. And it's just strange, difficult times. So we have to do it. Spend your virtual time with your friends. Figure out how it works and then make it happen. I love this next tool. It's, I, I wrote up here, do a virtual act of kindness. So I do this every single day of my life. So an act of kindness is something that you can do out of the norm, out of the, uh, um, let, let me give you a couple of examples. My wife and I just recently went uh, 
out on my birthday. And there was a restaurant that was open. We were all socially distanced. It was one of my favorite restaurants. So we go there and um, had a, a wonderful meal. As we're, as we're walking out, I always make an attempt, especially if it's a good server, to make a difference in that person's life. So I called for the manager. Everybody's wearing their masks. The manager came. And you could see that there was tension because they were assuming that I had an issue. And when I, when I told them, I just wanted to take the time to tell you that my server gave them her name, was phenomenal. And she needs to be recognized. And the manager told me, like I could see his eyes like this, And here's what he said. He said, nobody does that. Everybody's under so much tension and stress that they are just, they're angry. They're upset. And I thought you were angry and I thought you were upset. And this is so good to hear. So you could do these acts of kindness. Acts of kindness might be calling a, uh, 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 an adult care facility calling them and saying to them, you know what? I know that you guys are, I know that you guys are under very difficult times. Can you uh, just accept this phone call? as somebody that uh, appreciates you, honors you, and uh, thank you for doing what you're doing. Call a hospital, call a movie theater, call somebody, just an outside box, actual kind of, actual uh, act of kindness. You know, in, in my classes that I teach, um, one of my classes is called Human Relations. And in Human Relations, I teach this uh, acts of kindness that they have to, for seven days, do an act of kindness that is going to benefit somebody else. And they have to record it. Who they did it for, why, where they did it, um, what were the results for the individual or group, how did it affect them and how did it affect you? And they had to write a paper. This was a, a paper at the, end of this, at the end of the term. It was awesome to be able to challenge them to an act uh, of kindness, an actual, actual virtual act of kindness. So let's go uh, continue. I got a quote here about that. Sure. Unexpected kindness is the most powerful, least costly, and most underrated agent of human change. I'm going to read it again. Unexpected kindness is the most powerful, least costly, and most underrated agent of human change. So if you could do an act of kindness, you are going to change the world. I often say that every step Somebody takes, creates a ripple. Every act of kindness that you do creates a ripple that it just extends out. So another thing that I uh, have suggested is to light a candle or, or use essential oils. I do this in my office. In my office, I have an essential oil that I use. I pour water in it and I put drips. My favorite is eucalyptic oil. I burn it like a, and I don't burn it. I uh, plug it in and a mist comes out. And this mist helps me reduce my feelings of stress and anxiety. And it's called aromatherapy. All kinds of studies back up the uh, authenticity of aromatherapy, uh, of aromatherapy, how it decreases anxiety and it improves sleep. I love this quote. Aromatherapy is a caring, hands-on therapy which seeks to induce relaxation, to increase energy, to reduce the effects of stress and to restore loss balance to mind, body, and soul. So, family of caregivers if you can light a candle 
a scented candle, use essential oils, or other things that can fill the um, room with aroma, that is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful tool to help reduce stress. I know one of the things that really works for me is chocolate chip cookies. I mean, the smell of a chocolate chip cookie is unbelievable. So I got to share this with you. Um, when I was in New York City, the 58 days I was there, I was, I was a caregiver. I was a caregiver for the decedents. My job was working with uh, um, assisting funeral directors to come and collect loved ones under their care. They were overwhelmed. I had, I had a funeral director that she, they had 400 um, uh, clients, um, families that they served in a two week period. That was double the amount that they had in a year. They averaged 200 a year. And this was an ongoing thing. She had 400. Oh, she was overwhelmed. And um, she needed uh, she needed some supplies. And oh, you know, and I listened to her and I prayed with her and I just walked beside her. I was able to gather up some of the things that she needed. In fact, several hundred things that she needed. And at no charge, it was able to give them to her. It was our little secret, but it was just one of those God winks, you know, a divine appointment. Here's what happened. She has a six-year-old daughter. Her six-year-old daughter made chocolate chip cookies, batch after batch, until three o'clock in the morning. She brought in a box of chocolate chip cookies for my fellow team members and my associates. And let me tell you that those chocolate chip cookies, and I mentioned we are working as caregivers work too, nonstop, working exhausted. And here was a chocolate chip cookie. Oh, I could smell it. Isn't that funny? I mentioned chocolate chip cookies and it took me right there. Scents do that. They take us right to a good place. So aroma therapy, it's a good thing, you guys. A really good thing. Um, I love this one. Maintain a positive attitude. When I work with folks and trying to comfort them who are struggling in their thought life, I always try to challenge them and, and we do an exercise to make an effort to replace three positive thoughts for every negative thought. And I encourage you to do this. For every negative thought that might come your way, whether it's about the last season of a loved one you're caring for or um, some situation, if you can replace that negative thought and shift it, the three positive ones. Do that. Practice that. It takes practice because we are wired negatively. That's just the way it is, folks. Unfortunately, we are born in a negative bias. So we have to learn behaviors to alter that. It takes practice. So um, put the brakes on and replace it with three positives. It's incredible. Studies have shown that a positive environment is supportive, it's nurturing, it's empowering. A negative environment is fearful, it's draining, it's judgmental. So I mentioned to you earlier this morning that the average adult makes 35,000 choices a day. Do you know that one of our choices is that we can choose to be happy? we can choose to embrace optimism. One of the other lessons that my dad taught me was that there are always two sides to everything, everything. And then he said, embrace the optimism. Embrace the optimistic choice. So I wanna challenge you, 
Here's three things that I want you to incorporate into your daily living. First, turn an obligation into an opportunity. Whoo, caregivers, how difficult is that? We are obligated to care for our loved ones. At least we feel that way, right? But if we can mentally hit that switch, flip it, turning an obligation into an opportunity, the whole perception changes. You know, our perception is our reality. And every time we perceive something negative, then the reality is it's negative. That's our reality, even though it's not. Our perception is our reality. So if you could change the perception of something being negative into positive, turn it into an opportunity. You know what? I'm, when I was growing up, you guys, I was forced to go to church. I was raised in a very traditional home. And um, I, I remember growing up saying, man, I'm not going to force my kids to go to church. I just won't do it. I won't do it. And I got through it. Gosh. And I mentioned earlier that after my attempt of suicide, I had an enlightening moment where an obligation became an opportunity. My obligation of, of learning about my faith and my youth turned into an opportunity. And when that, that happened, my whole world shifted. Everything became an opportunity. Think about your caregiving challenges. If you can shift that obligation into an opportunity, and it's, it's a short season, maybe not so short. I, I have sat with uh, so many support groups with caregivers. I was with one group, and I'll tell you, that the average age or the average longevity of the caregiver was 13 years. We had a group of 20 of us. The average length that they have been caring for somebody else was 13 years. Wow, a lot of years. It's a long season. Whatever the season is, long or short, it's a season of opportunity. So somehow try to mentally shift that. Embrace optimism. Choose happiness. Turn an obligation into an opportunity. And those tools will really begin to shift you and help you have an impact on life. Um, be grateful. There's another one. Oh, wow. Learn to be grateful. When we're grateful, it shifts us into a different gear. We're all, all helping someone. I love this quote, family. If you can cultivate an optimistic mind, use your imagination. Always consider alternatives. And dare to believe that you can make possible what others think is impossible. Practice an optimistic mind. Think about new ways, new inventive ways for positive alternatives. Trust it, believe it, achieve it. Then you can make possible what others think is impossible. So this is my 10th tool. And I'm, I got to tell you, it's one of my favorites. I mean, I, I use a lot of these tools. But this is a big one for me. Write down thing. You know, some people can journal. I don't journal. But in my private practice, it, you know, you run across people that in their ways of dealing with things, write them down. And it's a wonderful mechanism. It's a wonderful way to handle stress, to write, to keep a journal. That will help you relieve the stress and anxieties. And while you're writing, writing, focus on the positive, not the negative. Too many people write, but they write negative. 
if you can write and begin to cultivate the positive, that will really help as well. Um, write down what you're grateful for. Uh, this gratitude, will, uh, again, will help relieve the stress and anxieties of trying to manage your thoughts, trying to manage your emotions. And here's a wonderful thing for me. I'm a musician. I play several instruments and I write. And I've done, uh, I have an album, I've done a music video, but music has always been very close to my heart. I led worship, I pastored for 35 years and I led worship all of those years. But here's what music can do if, if this is one of your tools. It's a wonderful stress reliever. Fast music makes you feel more alert and you concentrate. Upbeat music can make you feel more optimistic, can make you feel more positive. Slower music, it can quiet your mind, ease your thought life, relax your muscles, and then it can make you feel soothed while releasing the stress of the day. Here's what I know about music. It is an effective tool for stress management. And it is an effective tool to relax. I love this quote by Auerbach. Music washes away from the soul the dust of everyday life. Music washes away from the soul, the dust of everyday life. And so I'm going to go back up here. And, and uh, these were 10 of our, of our uh, tools. Um, take time to talk. Talk about it. Be authentic. Be real. Figure out new ways to uh, create routines in your life. Be creative. Exercise. Take a deep breath. Do We did that exercise. Do that. And that will definitely help you out. Find humor in your day. Laugh. Do a belly laugh. Spend virtual time. Try to figure that out as well. And if you're not real adept in technology, you can learn. I'm learning. I have to learn how to shift. I, I've always done these presentations face-to-face. -face, large audiences. And now I'm in a box. But we can still do it. Um, acts of kindness. Remember that, that if you do an act of kindness, it is the least costly and most powerful way to make a change in somebody's life. Uh, use essential oils. Use aromatherapy. Use candles. Use anything you can, and that will help reduce the stress. Keep a positive attitude. Turn an obligation into an opportunity. Be grateful. Help someone. And then find a way to either write or listen to music and allow that to cleanse your soul. So I love this quote from Martin Luther King. If you can't fly, then run. And if you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, caregiver, you have to keep moving forward. I love this picture. That little mouse has a helmet. Think about what helmets do. They protect your head. Think of the things that can protect your heart life. Your, and think of the things that can protect your thought life. Your head, your heart, your hands. Keep all three of those on the same page and you're going to have a good night's rest. Whatever you do, keep moving forward. Don't give up. This is an incredible uh, thing for me. Um, when I got off the plane... And I came back from my deployment to Texas. I talked to so many people. Uh, Cedar Rapids didn't have any power. The entire city was dark. A blackout for 
all of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and our two little suburbs, Hiawatha and Marion. No power. I had at least a dozen people tell me, Jim, I have never seen the stars. I could see the Milky Way. I have never, ever seen anything like that when I looked up. When life knocks you down, roll over, look at the stars. And if you remember our HOPE acronym, our HELP acronym, HOPE, Encouragement, Lifelines, and Purpose. But what is HOPE? Hope is being able to look up. It's being able to see stars in the midst of darkness. And that's what hope does. Some days are better, some days are worse. Look for the blessing instead of the curse. Be positive, stay strong, and get enough rest. You can't do it all, but you can do your best. I think I have maybe just a couple more minutes with you. I want to look into your eyes, into your heart. The eyes are the mirror to the soul. And the first thing I want to tell you, thank you for what you do. You're not alone. We walk in each other's shoes. And even though this event is having to be simulcast like this, you have each other. You have each other. And I hope and I pray that in your deepest, darkest moments of despair, of anxiety, of struggle, that you get help. That you have hope to see beyond your situation, that you have encouragement in your heart that will make your heart flow. That you have something to hold on to, a lifeline, and that you have a purpose to get up every morning. Caregivers, we are the most underrated heroes in the world. The most unappreciated heroes of the world. And I don't know what season you're in, but I know the season that I've been in and this season that I'm in. From my heart to yours, and from Health First Center for Family Caregivers, we love you. We embrace you. We walk beside you. We comfort you, and we're here to offer you help. Stay strong, stay positive, turn your obligation into an opportunity, as hard as that may be. Keep looking up, be encouraged, hold on to your lifelines, and understand that your purpose is very valuable. With that, I'm just going to say bye. It has been an incredible honor to be with you. Well, just a little emotional. Just because I'm reliving my experiences and I'm living my experiences. Seems like everywhere I turn, I'm, I have a challenge. But I love it. And I love you. God bless you guys. I almost sound like a politician. No, 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 no. Oh, um, keep up the great work. All right. With that, I'm done. See you guys. On behalf of everyone at Health First, I want to express our sincere gratitude to you, Dr. Coyle, for your participation in our 2020 Caregiving for Seniors Annual Conference and for shining a spotlight on this year's theme, Empowering Caregivers with Hope, 
joy, and self-care. And that's exactly what you did today. Your passion for helping people get to a better place physically, emotionally, and spiritually, and guiding them through their personal storms in life served us well today as we continue to work through the challenges of caregiving. We thank you for your enthusiasm, positive spirit, and your hopeful message that will inspire and encourage us to take your words into practice as we continue our journeys. It has been an honor and pleasure having you as our keynote speaker. Thank you. I would also like to thank Mike Maloney for his kind participation in today's event. Thank you, Mike, for reassuring caregivers in our community that they are not alone, that Health First is here for them to provide the education, support, and resources they need to stay well and stay strong. Many thanks to our panel of experts, Dr. Visa, Michelle Rogers, Tiffany Overrott, and Robin Peterson for addressing common caregiver concerns and challenges and for sharing their in-depth insight, practical tools, and solutions for approaching new mild markers. Our planning committee would like to gratefully acknowledge the contributions of our event organizers. We are fortunate to have this key group of people who contributed in so many ways to transform this event into a smooth running virtual meeting and for keeping everyone in our community safe and connected by doing so. Thank you for your outstanding support. I can't let this event conclude without thanking the Health First Foundation and our event sponsors. Your partnership was vital to the success of this conference. You are truly appreciated. When you give through the Health First Foundation, you help us to provide a widespread number of programs and services for caregivers, their loved ones, and the aging population in our community. With the support of the Health First Foundation, all programs at the Center for Family Caregivers are free of charge for everyone in Brevard. 100% of your gift goes directly to the Center for Family Caregivers and helps these efforts. To learn more, visit hfgive.org. As we bring this conference to a close, we want to thank you, our conference participants, for attending our 16th annual conference. We hope that you found it a valuable experience and a good source of both inspiration and information. For more information on future programs and services at Health First Aging Services and the Center for Family Caregivers, please visit our website at hf.org aging. Again, thank you for sharing your time with us today.